द फर्स्ट फार्मर्स एंड हर्डर्स नियोलिथिक एज 8000 बीसी टू 4000 बीसी द नियोलिथिक एज और द न्यू स्टोन एज मार्क्ड अनदर स्टेप इन द प्रोग्रेस ऑफ मैन द टर्म नियोलिथिक इज डिराइव्ड फ्रॉम टू ग्रीक वर्ड्स नियोस एंड लिथोस द मीनिंग ऑफ नियोस इज न्यू एंड द मीनिंग ऑफ लिथोस इज स्टोन इट इज एस्टिमेटेड दैट इट टुक अबाउट 3 लाख इयर्स for the man to change from a food gatherer to a food producer many other important changes also took place in his ways of living at this stage in other words we can say that in the new stone age man made a lot of progress from the caves man moved into houses he tamed more animals he had improved his weapons greatly his tools and weapons though still of stone were smaller sharper and polished these tools were of great variety and included stone axes chisels hammers lancets knives etc main features of the neolithic age the important features of the neolithic age or the new stone age were man took to agriculture after centuries of practicing food gathering humans learned to grow their own crops and plan their harvests Ancient man now learned the art of sowing seeds to grow plants. He found that by putting seeds into the soil and watering the soil, plants would grow. Soon he produced cereal crops like wheat and barley and some fruits and vegetables. It was an important discovery as it marked the beginning of agriculture. He became a food producer. Food grains have been identified from the remains of burnt grains. found at some neolithic sites domestication of animals during the neolithic period humans started domesticating animals to help in the work of agriculture in the course of time goats sheep wild cows and buffaloes were domesticated by him to get milk thus in the new stone age man became an agriculturist and cattle herder or cattle rearer but he continued hunting In this way domestication of animals was an important achievement on the path of progress of the ancient man hoof marks on clay at neolithic sites suggests domestication of cattle bones of dogs have also been found at these places the animals have been identified through their characteristic bones beginning of settled life settled community was another result of agriculture Small groups of families made their dwellings near their fields. Man now began to lead an easy and settled life. He built huts with clay, grass, twigs and sticks. The houses were simple and mud structured. The early homes were pits dug into the ground. Underground homes kept the residents warm during the winter season. The sides of the pits were plastered with mud. Some pits even had ladders. In the next phase of development people came out of the pit homes and started building mud houses at ground level the neolithic people had their settlements in granite rocks they gave them natural protection from rain and the sun and could be conveniently adopted for dwelling purposes village organization as more and more families started living together their settlements gradually developed into villages The villages were generally found near the rivers and lakes where the soil was fertile and water was available in plenty. When man started living in village community, he could not do as he pleased. There had to be some law and order in the village. In the beginning, whenever there was some dispute in the village, it was settled by the elderly people of the village community. The elders also made laws which all the people had to obey. Later on, They chose a wise man as their leader. The leader settled disputes and also protected the village from attacks from outside. Thus, a settled life brought about greater cooperation among the people. Invention of wheel. Another very important discovery of the period was the invention of wheel, which made life easier in a number of ways. Now, man could make a cart which was drawn by tamed animals. and more people could travel easily from one place to another the wheel also helped to move heavy loads from one place to another 
Besides, the use of the wheel improved the art of pottery. Thus, man could now travel faster and also transport his surplus produce to other villages. Extensive use of fire. At this time, the use of fire was further extended. It served the purpose of cooking food of different varieties. Man had by now learned to make earthen pots. These earthen pots were heated to a certain degree and hardened so as to hold food, etc., for a longer time. He also learned to make small fire in an earthen dish, the first lamp to bring a bit of light and warmth into his dark, cold home. Pottery and other arts and crafts. Before the invention of wheel, handmade pottery was used. Later on, man used potter's wheel to make pots. He chose different kinds of clay for making vessels. He painted on these clay vessels figures of leaves and flowers. The common colours were red, yellow, brown or purple grey. Man now learned to weave coarse cotton and woolen fabrics. He shaped fine needles and combs from the bones of animals and ivory. He could also weave cane baskets. He made arrows and bows to kill animals. Besides the crafts of carpentry, spinning and weaving, dyeing, stone cutting and polishing, drawing and painting were also known to him. Religious Beliefs The Neolithic man was still puzzled about certain natural phenomena such as thunder, lightning, earthquakes, floods, etc. that brought about destruction. He therefore began to worship the sun, the moon, the stars, thunder, lightning, etc. He now began to think that there was some superpower which controlled all these factors. This was perhaps the first idea of God that came to him. The Neolithic man worshipped ancestral spirits. They performed a large number of rites on the occasion of death. They believed that the dead must be provided with all the amenities of life. They used urns for keeping the bones and ashes of the dead. The urns were oval in shape. Some were one-legged and some were without any leg. Urns have been found in Maski, Salem, Hyderabad and Karnataka. Several burial sites have been found at Mehrgarh. In one example, a dead person was buried with goats which was probably meant to serve as food in the next world for the dead. Improved Tools The Neolithic man greatly improved his tools and weapons. His tools and weapons were still made of stone, but now they were far better and efficient. Apart from hunting, man used these tools for other purposes. Stone axes with wooden handles were a remarkable example of workmanship. They developed different shapes of stone and used it as axes, sickles, bows and arrows. These tools were used in the field of agriculture for cutting and gathering crops. The Indian Neolithic implements can be classified into 78 distinct types. 41 types belonged to the polished class and 37 to the unpolished class. To the polished class belonged implements such as chisels, hammers, mortars, beads, buttons, discs, etc. To the unpolished class belonged arrows, knives, lancets, wedges and mallets. It appears that the Neolithic man had a fine sense of colour and no wonder they chose stones of different colours for their tools. Man had thus made great progress during the Neolithic age. He had learned the art of civilization, spinning and weaving, building houses, domestication of animals, etc. But all these things took thousands of years. The Calcolithic Age 4000 BC to 2000 BC the period when man used both stone and copper tools is known as the Calcolithic Age. This age was very short but extremely important because it was a transitional stage for man from the Stone Age to the Metal Age. It lasted from 4000 BC to 2000 BC. In this period, some achievements deserve a special mention. The discovery of metals. The first metal to be discovered by man was copper. He made use of this metal in making axes, swords, spearheads and many other weapons. Later on, he found that copper was a soft metal and the tools made of this metal would not last for long. 
so he mixed copper with other metals such as tin or zinc to make a new metal or alloy called bronze bronze was much more hard and sturdy than copper it was used by the calcolithic man for a number of purposes agriculture and domestication of animals the calcolithic age saw further advances in man's life though agriculture was still the chief occupation man now cultivated more food grains than in the neolithic age besides wheat and rice he grew a variety of pulses millets cotton etc he domesticated cows sheep goats pigs buffaloes and hunted deer he seemed to have known the camel also all these animals helped man in his everyday life dress and ornaments the calcolithic man wore ornaments and attractive clothes both men and women were fond of ornaments women wore necklaces of shells pearls ivory bones and other ornaments as well men wore fine and beautiful garments they also wore necklaces and earrings art and craft it is clear from the excavations that the calcolithic man was an expert coppersmith and a good craftsman of stone he also knew the art of spinning and weaving because spindle whorls were found in madhya pradesh he used different types of pottery the most popular was black and red it could be turned on wheel and sometimes had designs painted on them he built houses of mud bricks and thatch large houses have been excavated which shows that families had become large by them religious beliefs man now came to have some fixed ideas about religion he worshiped the sun fire trees bull and snakes some figures of women indicate that he worshiped the mother goddess also he buried the dead in urns with offering of tools clothes food etc as it was in the stone age social inequalities there were now rich and poor people in the society this is known from the graves of the children while the children of the rich were buried along with copper bead necklaces around their necks poor children had only earthen pots in their graves the calcolithic culture was mainly rural the man of this age was always trying to discover new methods which made his life more comfortable and easy but he lacked one thing he did not know the art of writing he learned this art when he built cities to live in towns and cities became centers of trade and industry it was the beginning of the bronze age civilization sites of tools and weapons ahar in rajasthan daimabad in maharashtra iran in madhya pradesh and brahmagiri near karnataka are some of the places where copper tools and bronze axes and knives have been found copper hoods have been also found in the ganga the yamuna the doab and the southern deccan northwest provinces the northwestern provinces was an administrative region in british india the northwestern provinces succeeded the ceded and conquered provinces and existed in one form or another from 1836 until 1902 when it became the agra province within the united provinces of agra and odd in up ilahabad served as its capital in 1858 when it also became the capital of india for a day area the province included all divisions of the present day state of uttar pradesh with the exception of lucknow division and fezabad division of awadh among other regions included at various times were the delhi territory from 1836 until 1858 when the latter became part of the punjab province of british india ajmer and merwada from 1832 to 1846 respectively until 1871 when ajmer merwada became a minor province of british india and sogor and nerbudha territories from 1853 until 1861 when they were absorbed into the central provinces administration The northwestern provinces was governed by the lieutenant governor who was appointed by the East India Company from 1836 to 1858 and by the British government from 1858 to 1902 in 1856 after the annexation of Awadh state the northwestern provinces became part of the larger province of northwestern provinces and Awadh 
In 1902, the latter province was renamed the United Provinces of Agra and Oth in 1904. The region within the new United Provinces, corresponding to Northwestern Provinces, was renamed the Agra Province. Northeast Northeast India is a lesser known area for archaeological research. However, it will be discussed here in order to show the importance and potential for Neolithic research. Being a contact zone of South Asia, Southeast Asia and East Asian countries, the region has a great diversity of cultural material dating from prehistoric times. Comparatively well-documented Neolithic cultural material is still described in a classifactory manner, which makes it further impossible to explain the basic terminological use of Neolithic culture, which was the new way of life in the prehistoric scenario a fresh approach with archaeological, linguistic and ethnographic evidence is adapted and applied in order to understand the relevance of Northeast India, commonly known as the Seven Sisters, to early origins of pottery and agriculture in South Asia, Southeast Asia and East Asia. The archaeological comparison is based on three issues, caught impressed pottery, shouldered celt, and rice agriculture, which aim to synthesize evidence from different neighboring areas to understand what they have in common and to provide clues for further research. Climate Northeast India has a subtropical climate that is influenced by its relief and influences from the southwest and northeast monsoons. The Himalayas to the north, the Meghalaya Plateau to the south, and the hills of Nagaland, Mizoram and Manipur to the east influences the climate. Since monsoon winds originated from the Bay of Bengal move northeast, these mountains force the moist winds upwards, causing them to cool adiabatically and condense into clouds, releasing heavy precipitation on these slopes. It is the rainiest region in the country, with many places receiving an average annual precipitation of 2000 mm, which is mostly concentrated in summer during the monsoon season. Chera Punji, located at Meghalaya Plateau, is the rainiest place in the world with an annual precipitation of 11,418.7 mm. Temperatures are moderate in the Brahmaputra and Barak Valley, River plains which decreases with altitude in the hilly areas. At the highest altitudes, there is a permanent snow cover. Languages Northeast India constitutes a single linguistic region with about 220 languages in multiple language families. Indo-European, Sino-Tibetan, thai Kadai, Austro-Asiatic that share common structural features. Assamese, an Indo-Aryan language spoken mostly in the Brahmaputra Valley developed as a lingua franca for many speech communities. Assamese-based Pitkin, Creolese, have developed in Nagaland, Nagamese and Arunachal, Nephemese, though their use has been on a decline in recent times. The Austro-Asiatic family is represented by the Khasi, Jaintia and War languages of Meghalaya. A small number of thai Kadai languages, Ahom, thai Fake, Khamti, etc., are also spoken. Sino-Tibetan is represented by a number of languages that differ significantly from each other, some of which are Bodo, Rabha, Karbi, Missing, Tiva, Diori, etc., Assam, Garo, Meghale, Ao, Tangkhul, Angami, Sema, Lotha, Konyak, etc., Nagaland, Mizo, Mar, Chakma, Mizoram, Russo, Tani, Nisi, Adi, Abor, Nongte, Apatani, Misimi, etc., Arunachal. Manipuri is the official language in Manipur, the dominant language of the Imphal Valley, while Naga languages such as Mao, Maram, Rongmei, Kabui, and Tangkul, and Kuki languages such as Thadao, Mar, and Peti predominate in individual hill areas of the state. Among other Indo-Aryan languages, Silheti is spoken in South Assam in the Barak Valley. Besides the Sino-Tibetan Tripuri language, Bengali is a majority language in Tripura. Nepali, an Indo-Aryan language, is dominant in Sikkim besides the Sino-Tibetan languages Limbu, Bhutia and Lepcha.
Bengali was the official language of colonial Assam for about 40 years from the 1830s. Agriculture The economy is agrarian. Little land is available for settled agriculture. Along with settled agriculture, jhum, slash and burn cultivation is still practiced by a few indigenous groups of people. The inaccessible